historical fiction often use primary sources as a tool in writing imagery. Primary sources are documents, images, or artifacts provide first-hand testimony of a historical topic or an event. Last week, you looked at several different historical photographs that Henry Ford, the author of Hotel in the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, used as he was trying to capture this moment when Japanese Americans were evacuated to internment camps. And what you notice was that he is pulling lots of details directly from these historical photographs. So your job today is to write a flash draft that uses imagery to capture a historical moment. And you're going to do that through first finding a historical photograph. So um, my topic, remember, is the history of Pike Place Market. And so I went and I looked for a historical photograph um, of Pike Place Market that first year. And I couldn't find um, a photograph of the first day that it opened. Um, so I just found one from that first year. So you might not find a historical photograph that matches directly with your story. Um, but I bet you can find a historical photograph um, that is going to fit your topic. Okay, um, so what your job is, is you're going to be writing a flash draft that uses imagery to really capture this moment. So remember that imagery, great imagery, makes the reader feel like they are there in the moment, experiencing it with the narrator. So what I'm going to do first, once I have my photograph, I'm going to imagine myself in this moment. I'm going to ask myself, what do I see, hear, taste, smell, feel? Because by the end of my flash draft, I want to make sure that you feel like you are here. You are right here in the middle of this historical moment. You can smell the horses, right? You can hear the crowds of people bartering over produce, right? You can see the carts stacked full of fresh fruit. So I started by brainstorming just a list of everything in this photograph that I saw, that I heard, that I tasted, that I smelled, that I felt. So um, I started with, I felt the warm summer day, right? Um, I, I saw an advertisement of headlight overalls. I actually had to look up what headlight overalls are. They're just an, a type of overall that they were selling. Um, I see umbrellas that are blocking the sun. Um, I hear just the chatter of crowds. Um, I, I saw these children down here. Um, I saw people bartering over um, how much produce should cost, right? I smell horses, right? Horses always smell terrible. Um, I could hear the creaking, the creaking of planks as people walk. So remember that um, I said yesterday that Pike Place Market was actually um, – uh, was built on these wooden planks, right? So they built the street out of wooden planks. So I could hear the creaking of the street, right, as people walked on it. Um, I noticed right away that the crazy outfits that the women were wearing, actually the men are wearing kind of crazy outfits too, but the women in these long coats and dresses and these extravagant hats. So once I've brainstormed a list of everything that I see and hear and taste and smell and feel, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start to write my flash draft. So here is what I wrote. Um, I am not going to necessarily use all of the details that I gathered, but I'm trying to really use imagery um, to paint a picture for you as a reader, to help you as a reader really experience, feel like you are experiencing this historical moment. So here's my flash draft. The planks creak as I walk towards the crowds. Horse-drawn carts, toppling with brightly colored fruits and vegetables, line First Avenue. There are even a few carts of baked goods. My mouth waters as I walk past a cart selling fre freshly baked breads. The smell of warm cinnamon hits my nose. I weave my way through the crowds of people. A woman in a heavy floor-length dress, dre dress picks through mounds of vegetables. She studies each one, searching for blemishes like it is a piece of fine jewelry. She tosses an onion and a bunch of purple carrots into a cloth bag and reaches into her handbag for coins. I hear the coins clank together as she hands them to the man. 
A few feet ahead, two men in three-button suits and derby hats argue loudly with a farmer. Six cents a pound, one shouts. That's absurd for cherries. So notice uh, that I actually included um, this detail about the derby hats. And so you might want to look up some of those historical details. I didn't know what those funny hats were that the men were wearing, so I just looked it up so I could include it. I step up to a cart of apples. The cart has been parked in front of an advertisement for headlight overalls. A group of children in white dresses and hats stare up at the giant painted image. I place my hand on an apple. Even on this warm summer day, it's cold to the touch. I move a few apples from the top of the pile and grab a bright red apple. I toss it in the air and catch it with my hand, feeling the weight. That'll be three cents, the farmer says. I reach into my pocket and feel around for change. I pull out a few coins and place them in his hand. He smiles. Enjoy, fresh from Walla Walla. Thanks, I reply, and bite, I should say, bite into the apple. The tart flavor bursts in my mouth. So I want you to notice that I'm using lots of details from this historical photograph. But I'm also including a lot of imagery that just helps you to imagine the moment. Like for example, I don't actually, right, I don't actually see a cart of apples, right, and I don't see anyone tossing them in the air and catching it and feeling the weight, right? I don't actually taste the burst of the tartness in my mouth. But I wanted to include details that helped you to really feel like you were experiencing this moment with the narrator. So here's your job. Step one, I want you to find a historical photograph of your topic. And remember, it does not necessarily need to like match directly with your story um, idea. Um, this is not going to be a part of your story. It could be later on, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. This is just practicing the skill of using primary sources to write great imagery. So you'll find a, a historical photograph. Um, you are gonna need to share a computer with your partner. So what I would love for you to do is work together to find each of you a historical photograph and then leave them both open on your screen so that you can, um, as you're writing, you can look at um, that historical photograph. Step two, you're gonna write a flash draft about the moment in the photograph. Your goal is to make the reader feel like they are there in this moment using imagery. I want you to challenge yourself, if you would like, to use a simile or metaphor somewhere in your piece. So I use the simile, she studies each one, searching for blemishes like it is a piece of fine jewelry. So remember today, your goal is to ask yourself, what do you see, hear, taste, smell, or feel in this historical photograph? And then really paint a picture for the reader. Make the reader feel like they're there experiencing this historical moment with the narrator. Okay, get started. Have fun.